Jainair, initially released as Jainair an Autobiography, is a novel authored by the English writer Charlotte Bronte. Published on October 19, 1847, under the pseudonym Curar Bell, its first American edition appeared in 1848. This building's roman chronicles the journey of the main character Jane as she grows into adulthood and develops a romantic relationship with Mr. Rochester, the enigmatic owner of Thornfield Hall. The novel is groundbreaking due to its exploration of moral and spiritual growth through first-person narrative, influencing subsequent writers such as Marcel Post and James Joyce. Charlotte Bronte is often recognized as the first chronicler of the inner self. Jane Eyre encompasses social critique, Christian ethics and explores issues of class, sexuality, religion and feminism, positioning it ahead of its time. It is considered one of the most renowned romance novels standing alongside Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. Let us talk first about the character list before we come to the summary of the novel. First character we will discuss about is Jane Eyre. The central figure and storyteller of the book, Jane is a perceptive, straightforward, unassuming young woman who grapples into subjugation, disparity and adversity. Although confronted by several characters who challenge her independence, Jane consistently triumphs in upholding her identity and adheres to her convictions of fairness, human respect and ethical behavior. She highly regards both intellectual and emotional satisfaction. Her firm stance on both gender and social justice confronts the era's biases against both women and the impoverished. Talking about Edward Rochester, Jane's superior and lord of Thornfield, Rochester is an affluent, fervent gentleman with a concealed past that generates much of the book's tautness. Rochester defies norms, dismissing civil courtesies, decorum and social strata considerations to engage with Jane in a straightforward and sincere manner. He acts impulsively and has spent a large part of his adulthood wandering Europe in an effort to dodge the repercussions of past recklessness. His troubles stem partly from his own impulsivity Yet he garners sympathy due to his prolonged anguish from an unfortunate early marriage to Bertha. St. John Rivers is another important character. St. John, along with his siblings Mary and Diana, acts as Jane's patron following her departure from Thornfield, offering sustenance and lodging. As the clergyman at Morton, St. John is aloof reticent and often domineering in his dealings. His detachment from the emotion and commitment to stern ambition makes him a contrast to Edward Rochester. Talking about Mrs. Reed, Mrs. Reed is Jane's harsh aunt. She rears her at Gateshead Hall until Jane's dispatch to school at 10. In later years, Jane seeks amends with her relative but elderly lady persists in her bitterness stemming from her husband's greater affection for Jane than his son offspring. Bessie Lee is another character. Bessie is actually the Gateshead servant, stands as the lone character in Jane's early years who consistently shows her kindness, offering tales and songs. Bessie ultimately weds Robert Leven, the coachman for the reeds. Mr. Lloyd is another character. The Reed's chemist, Mr. Lloyd, proposes that Jane should be educated at a school. Continuously compassionate towards Jane, Mr. Lloyd pens a letter to Miss Temple validating Jane's account of her youth and absolving her from Mrs. Reed's accusation of dishonesty. Georgiana Reed is actually Jane's cousin and one of Mrs. Reed's daughters. Is beautiful but treats Jane harshly in youth. Later, she forms a bond with Jane, entrusting her secrets. Georgiana tries to abscond with a man named Lord Edwin Weir, but her plan is thwarted by her sister Eliza, who informs 
Mrs. Reed. After Mrs. Reed's death, Georgiana weds a prosperous man. Then Eliza Reed, Eliza, another character of Mrs. Reed's daughters, and Jane's cousin, lacks her sister Georgiana's beauty and zealously dedicates herself to religious life, eventually joining a convent in France where she ascends to Mother Superior. Then John Reed, John Reed, Mrs. Reed's offspring and brother to Eliza and Georgiana, subjects Jane to horrendous abuse as children. He later succumbs to dissipation and vice, eventually taking his own life when his mother stops settling his debts. Then Helen Burns. Helen Burns is Jane's intimate companion at the Lawwood Institution, copes with her austere existence with serenity that baffles Jane. Helen succumbs to tuberculosis in Jane's embrace, leaving a profound impact on her. Then Mr. Brocklehurst, the merciless two-faced overseer of Lawwood School, Mr. Brocklehurst advocates austerity while embracing from the institution to finance his opulent way of life. The typhus outbreak at Lawwood exposes his fraudulent and corrupt actions, leading to his public disgrace. The next character is Maria Temple. Maria Temple displays kindness and empathy in her role as a teacher in Lawwood, showing Jane and Helen both dignity and tenderness. She, along with Basili, becomes one of the earliest positive female influences in Jane's life. Miss Temple vindicates Jane from the false charges Mrs. Reed levies against her. Then Mrs. Scatchard. At Lawwood, Miss Scatchard, the harsh and spiteful instructor, exhibits particularly harsh behavior towards Helen. Then Alice Fairfax is the next character. The housekeeper at Thornfield Hall, Alice Fairfax, is the initial person to inform Jane of the enigmatic laughter resonating through the corridors, falsely attributing it to Gracepool, a deception Rochester also perpetuates. Then we come across Bertha Mason. Bertha Mason, Rochester's secret spouse, was once a strikingly attractive and affluent Creole, now succumbed to insanity, aggression and savagery. She resides in a concealed chamber on Thornfield third level under Grace Poole's watch. When inebriated, Grace sometimes lets Bertha slip away. Bertha ultimately sets Thornfield ablaze, dying in the inferno. Then we talk about Grace Poole. At Thornfield, Grace Poole, tasked with overseeing Bertha Mason, often negligently permits Bertha's escapes due to her drinking. Upon Jane's arrival, Mrs. Fairfax blames Grace for all signs of Bertha's wrongdoings. Then Adele Warrens. Adele Warrens, Jane's student at Thornfield, is a spirited yet slightly indulged French girl. Rochester fetched her to Thornfield post her mother, Celine's desertion. Despite Celine's past as his mistress, he doubts he is Adele's biological father. Celine Warrens is the next character. Celine Warrens, once Rochester's lover and a French opera dancer, had claimed he fathered her child Adele. Even after dismissing these claims, Rochester took Adele to England following Celine's abandonment. He had entered his affair upon uh, discovering Celine's infidelity and materialistic nature. And Sophie is another minor character. Sophie is Adele's French governess at Thornfield. Then Richard Mason, Bertha's brother Richard Mason, suffers an attack by his deranged sister while at Thornfield. Aware of Rochester's marriage, plans with Jane, he and the lawyer Briggs arrive to disrupt nuptials and disclose Rochester's existing marriage. Mr. Briggs is the next character. An attorney for John Eyre, Mr. Briggs collaborates with Richard Mason to halt Jane's marriage upon uncovering Bertha Mason, Rochester's spouse. Following John Eyre's demise, Briggs seeks Jane to convey her inheritance. Talking about Blanche Ingram, 
A stunning socialite, Blanche Ingram scorns Jane, aspiring to wed Rochester for his wealth. Then Diana Rivers. Uh, Diana Rivers is the sister of Saint John and Mary, and is Jane's cousin. As a compassionate and astute individual, she advises Jane against moving to India with Saint John. Diana exemplifies for Jane a model of intellectual prowess and autonomy. Then Mary Rivers, Jane's cousin and sister of Saint John and uh, Diana. Mary Rivers is a caring. bright woman compelled to govern after her father's fortunes dwindled she embodies for jane a paradigm of self sufficiency who still upholds close relationships and a meaningful existence rosamond oliver is the next character he is a lovely offspring of morton's richest resident mr oliver and donates to the school where jane is employed smitten with saint john She nonetheless gets engaged to the affluent Mr. Granby. Talking about John Eyre, John Eyre is Jane's uncle. Bequeaths her a substantial inheritance of twenty thousand pounds. The last character we will discuss is Uncle Reed. Uh, Mrs. Reed's deceased spouse, Uncle Reed, is someone whose spirit Jane senses during her youth, having had affection for both Jane and her mother. He extracted a promise from Mrs. Reed to rear Jane as her own, a commitment Mrs. Reed fails to honor. So these are the major characters in the novel Jane Eyre. Now we will talk about the uh, summary of the novel. So during the beginning we can see Jane Eyre, a young orphan raised by her wealthy and unkind aunt Mrs. Reed, forms a bond with servant Bessie. who shares stories and songs with her after a fight with her cousin john reed jane is confined in red room where she believes she sees her deceased uncle reed's ghost mrs reed punishes her by imprisoning her and jane is rescued by bassy and mr lloyd the apothecary who suggest sending her to school a proposal mrs reed agrees to Then at Lowood School Jane encounters a harsh environment under the rule of Mr Brocklehurst she befriends Helen Burns who exhibits both helpful and displeasing qualities a typhus epidemic claims Helen's life and prompts the departure of Mr Brocklehurst Jane's situation improves with the arrival of sympathetic uh, replacements after 8 years at Lowood She seeks new experiences and becomes a governess at Thornfield, teaching Adele under the supervision of Mrs. Fairfax. Jane falls in love with her employer, Mr. Rochester, and saves him from a fire suspecting hidden truths. Jane's despondency deepens when Rochester introduces Blanche Ingram. However, Rochester proposes to Jane instead. On the wedding day, Mr. Mason reveals Rochester's existing marriage to Bertha. Bertha mentally unstable is hidden in Thornfield and Jane flees becoming penniless and finding refuge with the Rivers siblings Mary Diana and Saint John so Saint John discloses Jane's inheritance from her deceased uncle revealing their familial connection and Jane decides to share the inheritance with her new found relatives but refuses Saint John's marriage proposal Then we can see towards the end Saint John pressurizes Jane to join him as a missionary in India but she resists driven by her love for Rochester eventually she hears Rochester's voice calling her name prompting her return to Thornfield which has been destroyed by fire earlier Bertha perished and Rochester lost his eyesight and one hand Jane and Rochester rebuild their relationship at Ferdin where they eventually marry In Jane's conclusion she reflects on 10 blissful years of marriage perfect equality with Rochester and the restoration of his sight in one night after 2 years of blindness they welcome their first son into the world that was about the summary of the novel now we will have a short analysis of the novel Jane Eyre at its essence a uh, Jane Eyre chronicles Jane's pursuit of home and a sense of belonging are delineated through five distinct sections 
her early childhood at Gateshead, education at Lawwood, time at Thornfield, retreat to Moorhead and return to Rochester at Ferdinand. Throughout the novel, uh, Jane endeavors to establish a home in each of these places, encountering challenges that result in her displacement, either due to societal pressures or her unwavering commitment to preserving her identity. The conflict begins with Jane's altercation with John Reed and her subsequent punishment of confinement in Red Room illustrating how her orphaned status makes her reliant on those with great power irrespective of whether they offer love or dignity. Gateshead remains inhospitable due to Reed's aloofness. The Red Room incident also highlights Jane's temper and obstinacy as potential hindrances to her happiness, yet they serve as inner strengths that enable her to remain true to herself amid adversity. So Jane's pride prevents her from assuming the role of a grateful, compliant child suitable for life at Gateshead. When Mrs. Reed sends John to Lawwood, her negative opinion of Jane threatens to permeate the new environment through Brocklehurst's harsh doctrine. Fortunately, Jane encounters Mrs. Temple and Helen who impart Christian values that help temper her anger. Miss Temple, by holding Jane accountable to truth, enables her envisioned justice and fairness within a genuine Christian framework. These elements, coupled with Brocklehurst's removal, briefly transform Lawwood into a semblance of home. However, Jane realizes the impermanence of relying a single person for a sense of home when Miss Temple departs. Lacking financial independence, Jane embraces the role of a governess dependent on a wealthy household for stability. Her time at Thornfield recounts Jane with the intense passion of her youth, now in the form of romantic love. Even after admitting their love, Jane's moments with Rochester are fraught with ominous signs including Bertha's erratic behavior and the destruction of the chestnut tree. These unsettling undertones create a sense of unease surrounding their relationship. Nonetheless, Jane perceives Rochester as her home because he appreciates both her morality and passion. Following Richard Mason's intervention at the wedding, Jane uproots herself due to the fear of succumbing to the temptation of becoming Rochester's mistress. At this juncture, Rochester wields both financial and emotional power over her, necessitating Jane's departure to reclaim emotional autonomy. Rescued by reverse siblings, Jane gains the space to reassess herself. Her inheritance provides financial independence, enabling her to acquire more head and establish a home with the reverse. St. John uh, disrupts Jane's happiness with a proposal that demands she abandoned her passionate nature for loveless marriage in the name of Christianity. The tension reaches its peak in Jane's vision of Rochester and subsequent rejection of St. John's proposal. Jane realizes she cannot live without Rochester who stirs her passion. Upon finding Rochester at Ferdian, it becomes evident that he tried to take responsibility for his marriage to Bertha by attempting to save her from the fire. Blinded Rochester now relies on Jane, eliminating her subservience. Jane's marriage to him signifies her choice of a home characterized by both love and morality, wherein she alone holds ownership of herself. Now let's talk about the major themes in the novel Jane Eyre. First theme is love versus autonomy. As we know, Jane Eyre is fundamentally a tale of a quest for love, where Jane seeks not only romantic affection, but also a sense of being valued and belonging. In expressing her willingness to endure physical harm for genuine affection, Jane reveals the depth of her yearning for love from those she truly cares about. Like Helen Burns or Miss Temple, like however, as the story unfolds, Jane must learn how to attain love without compromising her well-being. 
her apprehension about losing autonomy leads her to reject Rochester's marriage proposal. Jade fears that marrying him while he is still legally bound to Bertha would reduce her to the role of a mistress, sacrificing her integrity for emotional satisfaction. Conversely, her life at Moore House possesses a different challenge. While she enjoys economic independence and engages in meaningful work, teaching the poor, emotional substance remains elusive. Despite St. John's marriage proposal, offering a partnership based on a shared purpose, Jane recognizes that their uh, union would lack love. The events at Moore House serve as essential test of Jane's autonomy. By proving her self-sufficiency, she paves the way for a marriage with Rochester where they are equals. Jane emphasizes this equality by stating that she and her husband are each other's lives, free in togetherness as gay as in company. Their characters align perfectly, resulting in perfect concord. This highlights a marriage founded on mutual respect and love where Jane is not asymmetrically dependent on Rochester as a master. Next important theme we can speak of is about religion. Throughout the novel, Jane grapples with the delicate balance between moral duty and earthly pleasure, navigating the tension between the obligations to her spirit and the needs of her body. Three prominent religious figures, Mr. Brocklehurst, Helen Burns and St. John Rivers serve as models of religion, but Jane ultimately rejects each as she develops her own perspectives on faith, principle and their practical implications. Mr. Brocklehurst epitomizes the perceived dangers and hypocrisies of the 19th century evangelical movement. Despite claiming to purge students of pride through evangelical rhetoric, his unchristian methods such as subjecting them to privations and humiliations reveal the flaws in his approach. Bronte, through Brocklehurst, criticizes the movement, especially when he hypocritically supports his wealthy family at the expense of lawwood students. While Helen Burns' meek and forbearing Christianity is admirable, it is too passive for Jane to fully embrace. In contrast, St. John Rivers represents a Christianity of ambition, glory and extreme self-importance. He urges Jane to sacrifice emotional fulfillment for moral duty, advocating a way of life that would require her to betray her own self. Although Jane rejects all three religious models, she does not abandon morality, spirituality or belief in a Christian God. In moments of crisis, she turns to prayer and places her survival in God's hands. Jane finds a middle ground that avoids the extremes of Brocklehurst's oppressive religion and the retreat from the world advocated by Helen and St. John. Her spirit understanding does not inhibit worldly engagement. Instead, it curves immoderate passions and inspires efforts and achievements. Jane's religion leads to self-knowledge, faith in God and a balanced approach to life. Another important theme in Jane is social class. Jane Eyre serves as a critic of Victorian England's rigid social hierarchy, with Blonde particularly moving into the complex social position of governesses, a crucial treatment of this theme in the novel. Similar to Heathcliff in Wuthering Heights, Jane embodies an ambiguous class standing, creating significant tension among the characters. Despite possessing the manners, sophistication and education of an aristocrat, reflecting the cultural expectations imposed on Victorian governors who taught both etiquette and academics, Jane remains financially and socially powerless while at Thornfield, highlighting the disparities in the treatment. Jane's realization of the double standard becomes evident when she acknowledges her feelings for Rochester. Despite being his intellectual equal, she recognizes the social gap between them. Even before the crisis involving Bertha Mason, Jane hesitates to marry Rochester, sensing that she would be indebted to him for condescending to marry. Her distress, notably in Chapter 17, can be seen as Bronte's criticism of Victorian class attitudes. Throughout the novel, Jane actively opposes class prejudice, 
in chapter 23 she chastises rochester asserting her humanity and challenging the notion that poverty and plainness equate to soullessness and heartlessness however it's crucial to note that despite these moments of resistance societal boundaries in jane eyre is not fundamentally altered jane's ability to marry rochester as his equal is made possible only through the almost magical inheritance she receives from her uncle emphasizing the novel's acknowledgement of the limitations imposed by societal norms next important theme we can see is gender relations jane eyre's struggle for equality and the overcoming of oppression extend beyond the challenges posed by class hierarchy she also contends with patriarchal domination fighting against the belief in women's inferiority to men three central male figures mr brocklehurst edward rochester and saint john rivers act as threats to her quest for equality and dignity each exhibiting a degree of misogyny they attempt to keep jane in a submissive position stifling her ability to express her thoughts and feelings in her pursuit of independence and self knowledge jane must escape brocklehurst reject saint john and only return to rochester when she ensures they can marry as equals this condition is fulfilled as jane demonstrates her ability to function within a community and family during her time at moor house by achieving financial independence and refusing to depend solely on rochester for love jane establishes herself as an equal partner moreover rochester's blindness at the novels and renders him dependent on jane as his prop and guide in chapter 12 jane articulates a radically feminist philosophy for her time she challenges the stereotype of woman as calm and emphasizes that women like men require exercise for their faculties and a field for their efforts jane contends that women suffer from rigid restraints and stagnation just as men would she criticizes the narrow mindedness of those who confine women to traditional roles such as making puddings and knitting stockings playing the piano or embroidering bags jane calls a broader perspective condemning thoughtless judgment of women who seek to do more or learn beyond what custom deems necessary for their gender next important theme we can see is home and belonging about home and belonging when we see that Jane's concept of home in the novel revolves around a sense of belonging and usefulness. At Gateshead, she perceives herself as discord and useless, emphasizing her lack of fit with the Reed family's temperament and her inability to contribute to the household's happiness. The absence of love from others and the absence of someone for her to love intensify Jane's sense of alienation at Gateshead. Upon arriving at Lawwood, Jane's attachment to the institution wanes after Miss Temple's departure as it was Miss Temple who made Lawwood feel like home without the person she loves most Jane's usefulness becomes insufficient to sustain Lawwood as her home later at Thornfield Jane considers Rochester her only home due to their deep emotional connection however she decides to leave rochester to prevent contributing to his sin and damaging his soul upon discovering bertha mason's existence feeling morally useless in his presence we can see that uh, in the novel's conclusion when jane returns to rochester her ability to be useful to him becomes possible as he now depends on her for his eyesight jane's desire for belonging is closely linked to her desire to be valuable to another person influencing her decisions throughout the narrative the idea of home for jane encompasses both a sense of belonging and the capacity to contribute meaningfully to the well-being of those she cares about last important theme we can say is about anxiety and uncertainty charlotte bronte employs frightening gothic imagery in jane eyre to emphasize the anxiety and uncertainty surrounding jane's place in the world particularly through descriptions of the supernatural the first encounter with the gothic occurs in the terrifying red room where uncle reed's connection haunts jane serving as a reminder of unfulfilled promises and the uncertainty of being loved the storm that splits the chestnut tree during rochester and jane's kiss 
creates an ominous atmosphere suggesting that nature itself objects to their union. This event acts as a warning to Jane indicating that despite appearances, her happiness with Rochester may not be secure. Additionally, scholars have identified Bertha as a gothic double of Jane, representing the violent passions and anger that Jane possessed in her younger years. The connection between Bertha and Jane underscores anxieties surrounding Jane becoming Rochester's bride. Even without knowledge of Bertha, Jane fears Rochester might tire of her and their marriage would challenge the rigid Victorian social class structure by uniting a governess with her master. Bertha's looming presence thus expresses Jane's apprehensions about their impending marriage and the ambiguity of her social position. The use of Gothic elements heightens the sense of foreboding and uncertainty that permeates Jane's journey. So that's all for today's video lecture. We have talked the important aspects of the novel Jane Eyre. Okay, thank you.